Welcome back, ghosts, ghouls, and things that go bump in the night. You know, it may be safe to assume that I'm a little bit of a night owl, but you guys don't really know the half of it. I can't even think about going to sleep before, I don't know, at least like 3 a.m. So when I came across this story, in which the author has all kinds of problems around 4 a.m., I realized that could easily have been me. And, well, that's enough to warrant a retelling in my opinion. So, sit back, relax, and tune in for 4 a.m. static. I should probably introduce myself before getting into it. My name is Kelly, and I'm a bit of a night owl. I work the evening shift at a gas station and usually don't get off until around midnight. Ever since I started working there, I found myself staying up later and later. Once you've gotten over your fear of the dark, nighttime can actually be really peaceful. There's no one to bother you, no non-stop noise from every direction, and no sun to bake and blind you. It's just you and the quiet contentment of a sleeping world. Of course, it's not like I'm out wandering the streets at night. I'm not that crazy. But just taking in the night from my apartment is really nice. At least, it was. Until one night a week ago. I had gotten off particularly late that night and didn't make it back home till about 1.30. I made something to eat before booting up my PC for a casual gaming session till sunrise. Around 4am I took a break from getting my butt handed to me by Godric. It took me like 30 attempts to beat him, and went to get a snack. While I was scrounging through my fridge though, I noticed something. There was a faint buzzing sound coming from somewhere nearby, like a broken air conditioner or an untuned radio. I checked every inch of my apartment which really isn't saying much, but I couldn't find out where the sound was coming from. I noticed something else in my search. Everything seemed kind of fuzzy, almost pixelated. It was like this thin film that hung in the air and was almost impossible to focus on. It was equally impossible to see through, kind of like manual breathing or something like that. Thinking it was just some weird eye stuff, I went to my window to see if it was like that outside too. When I pulled back the curtain though, I was met with nothing but a wall of black and white static. It was like someone had pressed a TV up to my window and switched it to the wrong channel. Wisps of it bled through the corner of the window, like tendrils reaching out to grab me. I quickly dropped the curtains before retreating to the stalwart defenses of my bed. I was so shaken up that all I could do was sit there and watch it bleed through the gaps in the curtains. The buzzing sound had grown louder too, becoming more like white noise. Now the whole room swam with static, pulsing and withdrawing on the whims of some unknown current, and I was drowning in it. I could hardly keep my eyes open without getting nauseous. At some point, I just put my headphones in to block out the noise and buried my face in the pillow. I woke up early in the afternoon with a killer headache. That static had completely disappeared, leaving me to chalk it all up as a hallucination. Of course, that's worrying in and of itself, but it was better than having no explanation at all. I went through my day like normal, worked, came home, and turned on my PC. As the night went on though, I began to feel more and more anxious. The longer the clock stretched on, the less safe I felt. I kept glancing up at the windows every few minutes, practically daring the static to come back. Sure enough, it did, slowly creeping in over the course of an hour. It was maddening to sit and watch it distort my home. It was just like the last night, the same white noise, the same soupy air, and the same scrambled light bleeding through my curtains. I just collapsed onto my bed and tried to pretend it wasn't there. That's how my nights went for the next few days. 
I'd just run and hide whenever the static came, while trying to pretend I didn't have a problem. I tried doing some research into whatever it was I was going through, but I couldn't find anything about it online. I tried asking around on some forums too, but still, nothing. I couldn't turn to the police or anything either, I just looked crazy. I was efficiently on my own here. Moving forward with the assumption that this was all real and I wasn't insane, I had to figure out what this thing was and how to end it for good. I figured a good place to start would be seeing how the static actually goes away before I wake up. I bought a few energy drinks, found my best pair of noise-canceling headphones, and drummed up what little courage I had before settling in for a long, long night. Just like usual, the static started creeping in soon after. It appeared behind the curtains first and quickly spread throughout the room. I tried everything I could to distract myself, but by five, the static was too overwhelming to ignore. It distorted everything it touched into something new and awful. The most solid things in my life now rippled and flowed at the faintest glance. Even the familiar glow of my computer had become harsh and alien, blinding me with a million unnamed colors. I switched my monitor off and closed my eyes for a moment. Opening them again was one of the hardest things I'd ever done. It was only 5.12. I stumbled over to the kitchen and grabbed a drink, washing down what were probably painkillers to dull my throbbing headache. Out of nowhere, a heavy thud split the monotone hum of the static. I actually jumped, crashing into my fridge behind me. Then another thud rang out across the room, and another, and another. I was shaking as I slowly realized that something was knocking on my door. I pulled myself up and over to my apartment's entrance. The knocks came rapidly now, almost panicked. That same TV static rippled out from the edges of the door as if to highlight it. Somehow, I willed myself to look through the peephole. Bright noise flooded my eyes, but there was something else there too. It looked like the static had been drawn out and distorted into a figure. Its features flowed like the world around it, having two eyes that merged into one, then split into seven in a fraction of a second. I couldn't wrap my brain around it. The way it was everything all at once, even trying to remember it now makes my head hurt. One thing was certain though, it wasn't human, but it was trying to be. It wrapped its hand, or maybe hands, against the door ceaselessly, sometimes knocking, sometimes tapping sometimes even trying the doorknob, but never stopping. It was nauseating, yet mesmerizing at the same time. I managed to pull myself from the peephole before collapsing to the floor. The world had become a dizzying, fuzzy mess. I couldn't remember how long I stayed like that. By the time I was stable enough to pull myself upright, it was somewhere around six in the morning. The knocking at my door was just as loud as ever and the static still pulsed throughout every inch of my apartment. Just when I thought it would never end though, the static began to fade, replaced by the cool glow of early morning. The thing at the door stopped, letting out a warbled screech before stomping away down the hall. Whatever this static was, it seems to hate sunlight, and that gave me an idea. After an excruciatingly long shift, I got home and started preparing. I tore down all my curtains and sealed my windows shut. I put some heavy-duty magnets on my door so that it'd close on its own, and replaced the doorknob with one I could exclusively lock from my phone. I'm sure you've probably figured it out by now, but I was planning on luring the thing into my apartment, trapping it, and killing it with sunlight. Now that the prep work was done, all I had to do was pull it off. By 4 a.m., the static had returned. Without the curtains to hide it, it lit up my room in black and white and filled the air with a low buzz. I took a shot to calm my nerves and waited. The hours stretched on and on as the static only increased in intensity. The world around me blurred into a mushy, unfocused nightmare. Every thought seemed to fade away from me, swept in a maelstrom of harsh white noise. Then, the first knock came. 
blow was like a kick in the teeth, snapping me back to my senses. I had to stay focused if I wanted to end this. I got up and stumbled over my bathroom door, pulling out my phone. I took a few deep breaths and hit unlock. The front door clicked, and for a moment, everything was quiet. The handle wiggled a bit before the door slowly swung open. The thing stepped inside, its body shifting and flowing with the static that poured in behind it. It stood there, taking in the room before slowly creeping towards me. I was frozen in place. Everything about it was wrong, impossible even. Its body bent and contorted as it moved with both the grace of a dancer and the swagger of a drunk. It was like a million different things were all fighting to control one body. The door slowly closed behind it as it drew near. The second I heard it click into place, I locked it before retreating into the bathroom. I barricaded the door behind me, ensuring there wasn't even the slightest gap in its frame. The thing started banging on the bathroom door, shaking the entire room. I sat in my bathtub, burying my head in my knees and praying it ended soon. It was wailing on the door, its constant blows punctuating the monotonous hum of the static. But just as suddenly as the assault began, it stopped. I checked the time, but it was only 5.30. Had the thing found some other way out? I was just about to get up when a warbling, high-pitched buzz came from the other side of the door. Slowly, the noise solidified into a dozen voices, all overlapping to form a single phrase. Please, let me in. It repeated it, over and over, sounding more desperate by the minute. Other voices, each more distorted than the last, began to cut in. It's nice out here. The stars are beautiful tonight. I'm so lonely. Please come out. I've come to help you. The thing spelled out all this constantly, its desperate ramblings even drowning out the white noise. I just covered my ears and tried my best to shut it out. I knew the end was near when it started pounding against the door again. It cried out, pleading for me to let it in, begging me for mercy. As the sun began to rise, its pleas turned to screams. The entire bathroom rattled under its assault as it screeched in a million voices. The static reached a fever pitch and wave after wave of nausea hurtled through me. I let it take me this time, vomiting all over the floor before passing out. It was quiet when I woke up. No static floated in the air. No noise filled my ears, and no bangs shook the room. I pulled myself out of the tub and checked my phone. It was nearly noon by now. I tore down the barricade before slowly stepping into my room. Sunlight poured through the open windows, all traces of the static gone. Both doors were covered in scratches, but other than that, everything was normal. That night, I anxiously awaited for the static's return, but it never came back. It's been a few days since then, and I've blissfully returned to my old routine. I still don't have an explanation for what happened most nights. I don't think I ever will. While I'm happy that it's all over, I just can't forget about it. The whole affair has been eating away at me ever since. That's why I decided to write this, just in case anyone else has been through it or has some explanation. I don't even care if it's true at this point, I just want to go back to those old, tranquil nights. And that, listeners, is the story of 4AM Static. Have you experienced this late night phenomenon? Are you often up until 4AM? Listeners, if you have anything that you think would help Kelly, please send me an email at hauntedhorrorstorian at gmail.com or find me on Facebook at Haunted Horror Story and Podcast. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. So, until next time, my dear, dear listeners, stay spooky.
And remember, sometimes it's more than just a story.